Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Um, we want to find the local maximum and minimum values for this function without actually graphing the function. So how do we do that? We can use calculus to do it. Um, the way to do it is that we can use uh, what we call the first derivative test to find the local maximum and minimum points. Okay, so first thing is that we need to do the um, we need to find the critical numbers. And to find the critical numbers, we will need to take the derivative of this function first. Okay, so let's start by taking the derivative of this function. So we have f prime of x. Okay, that's equal to 12x squared and then plus uh, 6x and then minus 6. Okay, so that's our derivative. And then when we need to find the critical numbers, and for the for the critical numbers, we need to, uh, we have two cases: either f prime is equal to zero, or f prime uh, does not exist. And so, for the case when f prime is equal to zero, then let's just let's just start uh, writing down this information here. We need to find the critical numbers. Okay. So, first case is that f prime is equal to zero. And then in this case, what are we going to be getting here? So that means that uh, 12x squared, we can set this derivative, the first derivative, equal to zero, and then we try to solve this equation. And so we can factor out uh, six from all the terms. Then we are going to we are going to get what we are going to get six, and then we are having two x squared, and then plus x, and then minus one, and that's equal to zero. And then now we can factor this two x squared plus x minus one. So to factor that, we are going to get six, and then times. Now we will factor this trinomial as a product of two binomials, right? So first we need to come up with two terms that will multiply to two x squared, and so that would be um, that would be just x, right? So let me put down the x right here, x, and then two x, and then we also need to figure out two numbers. When we multiply them, we are going to get the one. So we are going to get the one here, and then the one here. So one times one will give you the one. And then now we need to worry about the signs um, because we are having a negative one right here. So that means one of the ones has a, positive, has a positive sign and then the other one will have a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so now let's check. Uh, if we look at the middle turn, the middle turn has a positive one X. And to get positive one X, we actually need to get the um, this one times the two X to be a positive positive 2x so that we can get the positive x. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to put a plus sign in front of this one right here. And then we are going to get a put a negative sign here. Okay. And then we can do a quick check. We have um, 2x and then that's negative x. So that will give us the positive x. So now that's good. And so uh, if we are solving this equation, then we are going to get uh, x equals negative one here. And then the other um, possibility is that x is equal to one over two, right? One over two, when we substitute into this x right here, we get two times one over two, which is one. One minus one, we get zero. Okay, so those are the two solutions for this equation. And so that means those two are the critical numbers. And what about the other case? The other case for... The critical numbers for finding the critical numbers is that f prime does not exist. Okay, but because this is a polynomial, so we cannot really find any values for which f prime does not exist. And so that means we are not going to be getting any values right here. So there is no value for this subcase here, no values. Okay, so we have our two critical numbers. So next step is that we are going to make a sign analysis chart so that we can use the uh, we can use that um, what is that the first derivative test. Okay, so how do we do that? We are going to first start by drawing a lumber line here. So let's do that. So let's draw a lumber line. Okay. 
Let's draw this lumber line right here. And then this is actually our x-axis. Okay, and then we can just do some labelings on there. Uh, what do we need to label on this lumber line? For this lumber line, all we need to label is that the, uh, the two critical lumbers on there. We do not need to label any of the, the other lumbers. So we are getting um, like the one. And then the other one is the uh, one over two. Okay, so... And those two critical lumbers will break the lumber line into three intervals. So there is one interval for all the x values uh, less than negative one, one interval for all the x values between negative one and one over two, and then all the x values that's that are greater than one over two. Okay, so now we are going to pick a lumber. So we are going to pick a lumber and then we are going to plug it back into our derivative and do the checking. And so what we can do is that we can we can pick, yeah, we can pick, uh, what can we pick here? We can pick zero because zero is between a negative number and a positive number. So that's for the ease of the calculation. Actually, it doesn't matter what numbers that you pick between the negative one and the one half. You can pick um, 0.1, a 0.2, a 0.3, as long as it's less than one half and greater than negative one, then that will be okay. But usually we just pick an easy number. Uh, for the purpose of the uh, making the calculation easier. Now, for this one, we are going to pick, since this is a polynomial, the domain is all real numbers. So that means we can pick any numbers that we have here, right? And so what we can pick here is that we are going to just pick a large number, we pick 1,000. And then on the left side of this, Legative one here, we are going to pick legative 1,000. And then you may say, why do I pick those big numbers? You will see in a few seconds why uh, picking those big numbers will be really helpful for checking the signs. Because all we care are the signs, right? We don't really care about what the answer is when you plug in the um, those numbers into the first derivative. So now if you plug in the zero in here, we can do the calculation really quickly. That's actually just the y-intercept of the first derivative. So that would be negative six. And so that means we have, um, let me put a minus sign right here. Yeah, so that's minus sign. Okay, so that's that. And then the next one, the next one would be what we plug in the 1000 in there. And as you can see here, um, when you plug in the 1000, it becomes really obvious that the the sign will be positive, even though we don't know what this number is equal to. And so we are going to get positive. And then same thing here, when you plug in negative 1000, you are going to score that negative 1000. So it, become, it will become a million. And then you multiply that by 12. And even though you are going to plug in the negative 1000 in here, which will give you a turn of negative 6000, but that's too small compared to your leading turn here, right? Your dominant turn for this first derivative. So this would still be a positive quantity. And so you may say, why do we care about all the signs? It's really because we, um, let's say for this interval, the derivative is negative, right? What does that mean? That means the function, the original function, the f, not the f prime, is decreasing on this interval. So that means f is decreasing from negative one to one over two. So we can now actually write down the result right here. Um, the function is decreasing. Okay, and then for um, the intervals that uh, that in which the uh, f prime is positive, then the function, the original function, is increasing. So now we can actually write down those information right here. If we are writing down the information, then we are going to we are going to get what we are going to have this. So the increasing intervals for the function, it's going to be first one is from negative infinity to negative one, right? So we are going to just put that down right here. So what is that? That's um, that's negative infinity to negative one. And then what is the other interval? The function is also increasing from one over two. 
to infinity. So we are going to get the second interval. So one half to infinity. Okay, so that's that. And then we can also write down the decreasing interval right here. What really happened is that uh, the, there was only one interval that f is decreasing, which is from negative one to one over two. So we can write it down here. So that would be negative one to one over two. Okay. Now, how do we find the local maximum and minimum points? Um, if we just try to imagine a little bit what the function looks like, and we can actually do a, like a really rough sketch on the sign analysis chart to show it. How do we show it? It's this. Now we know that the function has been increasing since like the infinity, and then it will change to um, decreasing when it goes past like the one, right? So we know that it's going to be increasing. And then once it hits this point, it will get a horizontal tangent. How do we know that it's the horizontal tangent? Because that's like the one is the value that will make the, um, when we plug that into the first derivative, the first derivative will become zero. So we are getting a horizontal tangent here. And then be, um, beyond this point, then we are going to uh, have a function, have the portion of the function that's decreasing. So it's going to go down with that. Okay, so now as you can see here, we just look at this local area right here, then we can see that that's actually a what a local maximum. Okay, now, on the other hand, for the one half, we know that the function has been decreasing. So we are going to get the um, decreasing right here. And then do you see what's going on here? Once it passes the one half, it will turn into increasing, right? So the function starts increasing after the one half. So you can see that that will be a local minimum. Okay, so we already have determined the maximum and the minimum. And then, so now what do we do? We can just write down the result here um, for the local max value, right? For the local... max value oh yeah so we have how do we get that we are going to plug in the uh leg the one into the original function because we're finding the y value of the function so we have f of with f of um what is that that's going to be leg the one in there and then what do we get here we are going to four times something cubed plus square minus six times something and then plus one and then all those x's all those blanks we are going to fill in the leg of the one and then i'm not going to spend the time doing the calculation right here i'm just going to um, just write down the answer the answer will be six so the answer will be six for this one And then to just make it easier easier for us to read, right? So I'm going to just underline all those, those words right here. So now it's easier to read. And then um, we also have a local minimum, right? So let's write that down as well. So we have our local minimum value. And let me just underline that. Okay, so what is the that value so let's just write down the function first and then we just fill that in what is that that's one half that we are going to plug in in there right so we have one half one half and one half one half and then you do all that calculation Right? You can use your calculator or you can do it manually by hand. It doesn't really matter. And eventually we are going to get the answer to be like the three over four. And so our local maximum value will be six and our local minimum value will be like the three over four. Okay. And then the X, the corresponding X values were those two. And so if you want to uh, just come up with a point, you can actually write it as like the one six and then one half and like the three over four. So, um, yeah, so if we want the point, right, if we want the point, then the point for this one, so local max point, 
And what is this equal to? That's going to be negative one and then six. Now, if you want a local minimum point for this one, right? So local minimum point. Then it would be one over two and then negative three over four. So that's how we come up with the point. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then um, give me some support. And I will really appreciate that. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.